Ready. Hello, hello all. Thank you for joining us. This is the first of many episodes of the Beta Build. I'm your host, BI7Gs, with my man off to the side. Psyop, what's going on, Playboy? How you doing? Doing well. All right. All right. So what we're trying to do is here, we want to bring you a lot of information, some entertainment, and hopefully you learn a little bit of things of hanging out with your boys. Um, So anything you want to talk about before we get right into the news of the week? Um, No, not really. Um, But what I was saying, no, Go, go for it, buddy. All right. Don't worry, man. Don't worry. It's only television. It's only television. So, first thing we want to talk about is the right to repair. Are you aware of such a movement? Yes. All right. And for those listeners or viewers that are unaware, the right to repair, uh, think of it as if you have an iPhone and you crack a screen. Well, in theory, the way that it's been practiced uh, in the United States is you have to take it to an Apple store and they fix it. You cannot go to your local store or a local repair shop to actually repair those devices, even though you have bought them and you own them simply because they have a monopoly on spare parts. They sometimes make things just increasingly difficult to actually repair. Um, So that goes from anything from an iPhone to an Xbox to, um, you know, even an Oculus. You know, we didn't have these kind of problems back in our day. If our shit just broke, um, our parents just didn't buy a new one. So what's your what's your thought about this? Um, Well, I can see both sides of this argument, Um, but I tend to lean more toward the community's right to repair, because essentially when you buy something, you're just buying uh you're you're buying all the parts fully assembled. And if a part breaks, you should be able to replace that one part. And and there should be a market for generic parts and stuff of that nature. Um so from corporate America's standpoint is they put R and D and time into into these products and you know they've they've come up with some formula that just works. Um, and they want to make sure they want to control that process because, you know, if person A repairs something themselves and they do it wrong, they're going to bad mouth the product instead of, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was what was say, your question? Uh, oh, no. Uh, I want to hear your final thought, right to repair. Yes or no? Yes. All right. I want to move on to our next topic, our next story here. The L.A. Planned Parenthood victim of cyber attack. How, I mean, wow. Um, Normally, when it comes to cyber attacks and ransomware, these guys usually have uh, certain things they stay away from. Hospitals, uh, small school districts, you know, and that's a very bad thing that they have actually gotten into a Planned Parenthood because simply with a Planned Parenthood, you don't know what's going on in those people's lives. Um, and the last thing that you want to do is leak somebody's information. Cause I know back in our younger days, I, uh, we, we, we went to Planned Parenthood. I'll never forget it. There was a time where we went and we came back. He was like, Hey, we got Pentium condoms. And I was like, Pentium, what the hell are you talking about? But they were premium. But, when, yeah, but, you know, what's your thoughts about this ransomware attack that actually happened on the um, on that Planned Parenthood? Um, they broke rules and they'll be pro- appropriately dealt with by the people that deal with those type of things. Now, now, so I'll ask you this question in the situation of this Planned Parenthood. Would you suggest that they try to wait it out, or should they actually pay the ransom? Um, I think that they. It depends. It depends on how how far they've been penetrated. Um, but I think. Words there, by the way. Yeah, the bontadre. <laughs> 
But um, I think I think if they if they haven't if they haven't been breached um, very bad, I think you could make a case for waiting because, like I said, uh, my people will take care of them. There, there's, there's uh, my people meaning programmers, it's hackers, those people. Uh, you, you mean the ones that, you know, when they saw a 28.8 BPS modem, they wanted to have their children, those guys? <laughs> yes, Hack those guys. Hack the planet! <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, it, it, hacker, hackers look more like me, not like the guys on the movie. Oh, you know, no, you mean like Zero Cool in the rest? Oh, you cannot tell me Zero but hey, Zero I'm Cool, so- Acid Burn, any of them. <laughs> but, but here's the deal, though. So do you do you think that the that the group that is responsible is you really do you really truly think that they would actually leak that data that they uh it depend it it depends on it depends on the data um I didn't catch who who what group was um what group was involved did they did anybody claim responsibility uh, I don't think no in the article they said that uh and this was reported by the Verge um but basically they were saying that that they noticed the breach and they started taking systems offline, but by then they were already starting to uh, notice the effects of the ransomware. So I don't know how far it got, um, but they're definitely, definitely got the, you know, Hey, you've been hacked, you know, message. And they know that they were right. But it could, that could be, that could just be some script kitty that they're going to, they're going to push it back to them. Or um, even if it's not, and now it's down to if it's a state actor or something like that. Like, uh, you got to understand hacker culture. So, some uh, say say if it's a state actor, they attack they attack a, a U.S. Co- corporation or organization. You have people out here in the community that actually know what they're doing that can say, "Okay, I got you," and you know they'll go do something in their their in their in their country. So, in other words, so final word on that one: tit for tat or pay the ransom. Both. Hey, can't be mad at that. Uh, the final story that I have for you this week is something else that is uh that we found amusing. Um, I know between the two of us, we really haven't played a whole lot of MMO RPGs since our wild days. You know, you know, for the horde. Screw the alliance. We're you know we always down for the horde. You know for the horde. Um, oh man, I thought that was horse. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> now you could probably get away with that back in the day with Baron's chat. You could probably get away with that. You could probably go around screaming around. I forgot the name of that little torrent town right there for the whores. I mean, wow! That takes us back to our days of uh, the Badlands. No, no, no. The uh, the the uh, the Barons. You know, the, uh, oh, Barons chat. Okay, I know what you're talking about. I'm trying to think. It was um, LFCWC. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, LF. LFG. Yeah, LFG. Yeah. Well. Well. Um. So Amazon has this. Have an has an RPG out. And basically, if you're not familiar with it, so I want to take you back in the time machine here. You remember back when we were playing Diablo 2? And when we were low on money, you remember what we used to have to do to get by? Farm? No, hell no. We cheated our asses off. Oh, Diablo 2. Diablo 2. I'm I'm still thinking, wow. No, we used to dupe our behind. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Bring me Big's ear. <laughs> well, <laughs> just to let you know, way back when, Psyop was one of the first dudes I knew that uh, that had an internet capable machine, and we went on the uh, battle.net and we were playing Diablo. And in the very first Diablo, if you wanted to actually trade with someone, you couldn't actually, you know, bring it up in their window. You bring it up in your window and you can compare. No, you actually had to drop it on the ground. The person had to pick it up and then turn around and say if they wanted or not, then it would drop money on the ground and you would pick it up. Well, I was a little unscrupulous back in my younger days, and this dude dropped a sword. So I picked it up, looked at it, and I logged out. 
never to be seen again because you didn't have a choice of servers or anything. You were just playing online. You just plopped in where you plopped in. Well, apparently PSYOP logged in after me, and you could put out bounties on people. But apparently... They do say, you know, bring me had a bounty for my ear looking for me, but he wasn't going to never find me. I wasn't logging back in ever because if I wasn't over PSYOP's house, I wasn't playing no more. <laughs> but uh, but basically what has happened was in New World, which is the Amazon MMORPG, what has happened is that they have permabanned over 1,200 accounts. I'm make sure I get my number right here. Yeah, 1,200 accounts for duping. Now, as a developer that you are, do you blame the player or do you blame the developers? I blame the developers. If they don't want people doing duping, they should write code so that they can't dupe. Wow. The software, if the software allows it, it should happen. Or it should, it's, it's fair game. Okay, so I'm just just to expand on that for just a little bit. There was in WoW, going back to WoW because I'm a little fit Blizzard fanboy, um, there was a guild that did i believe it was the lich king uh raid and there was a bug in that raid that they didn't know about but they were you know trying to do i think it was world's first and um and i believe what happened was they found this bug said hey if we do this it, it, it allows us to work and then they actually beat it, and then I believe they got World's First, but then Blizzard turned around and removed their World First title because they said that was an exploit. Once again, I'm going to go back to you. Do you actually say that they should have that removed, or if it was, well, yeah, remember, this was unintentional. The Blizzard. The mechanic of the fight. Yeah, no, Blizzard, Blizzard should have, Blizzard should have just took the egg on their face and called it a day. The code is allowed to happen. I don't want to hear bug, bug, glitch, anything. The person figured out he's using your software. He's only going, he's only able to do what your software allows him to do. So if your software allows me to do it, don't turn around and say it's a problem later. So once again, final word on that. Permaban these accounts or let them keep their wares and do a patch for the game that prevents it. Both. Yeah. Oh, okay. All righty. So, that's and in fact, in fact, I would, I would, I would actually raise the level of the new, the, the the new drops after after you can do. So you you basically you basically um, grab or you basically let those other other weapons fall by the wayside. That's a topic for another day. So, so you ready for the deep dive, Syab? You ready for that dive? Yep, let's go. This is the deep dive. This is the deep dive. All right, Sai, what you got for us this week on the deep dive? Well, this week uh, we'll start into the ideal form of government that I've come up with. Well, I haven't come up with it, but I think it would be the ideal form of government, which is the technocracy. And the technocracy leads to bureaucracy and other things that we're being told are, are bad. But the difference between a technocracy and the form of governance we have now is literally you have either an oligarchic, meaning uh, the people with the most money, which you know, in our, in our society, we say the people with the most money are the most productive, which isn't true. And um, with the technocracy, you know, it's, it's basically, it, with the technocracy, it's basically that, um, you know, human society gets together and attempts to look at all the resources on earth and determine who needs help and the person with the person that needs the help gets the most constructive help first first so with a technocracy you would actually build up the third world to a certain standard of living and then you would you would actually push that throughout the rest of the world now you still will have competition and stuff like that you uh, you need some healthy competition in order for advancement. 
Um, but the technocracy would would actually take over in the the ten areas of activity for human life. What are economics? Those, uh, what's those, what are those those levels of uh, those ten areas that you speak of? Yeah, uh, the ten level, the ten areas are economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, war, and health. I, I, all right, let's take a step back because I have a question there. Um, I understand on some of those, but sex, I don't understand how, how it would play into sex. Uh, you're being programmed every day. Um, look up Edward Bernays and that's, uh, that's, um, uh, Sigmund Freud's nephew. He, he's actually the father of the modern, of the modern, um, media or a modern ad ad agency it's it's actually if you go into uh text they'll actually call it what it is propaganda so you're being you're being programmed um to to look at sex from you know different different points of views by different groups of interest like it's not like they tell you who to have sex with sex with and who who not to have sex with it's just that they it's they they basically curtail the they basically curtail the the um influence of the media on sex that's another that's another series uh we'll go through the manufacturing uh manufacturing yeah. consent yeah because what you're talking about now man that's uh whoo as a as deeper than a i'm trying to think of it's deeper than something. I, I ain't got a good one for it, but I'll, I'll come up with something later on. But, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, so with the manufacturing consent, like every, every day when you watch a commercial, you, know, you, remember, you remember that old movie with uh, Patrick Swayze where you put on the glasses and like, obey this, oh, that, or the other, the aliens. That was, that was not, oh, my God. That, that was, was Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze, man. That was Roddy Roddy Piper. Okay, well, whoever they live. Oh my God! Yes, that's the movie. They live. I thought it was. I thought I literally thought that was somebody else. Dude, but the most uh, iconic fight scene in it ever. You know how many ball shots were in that one? It doesn't matter. The 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 movie was teaching you something very very important. Aliens were here. <laughs> no, oh. the 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 propaganda machine. Like literally, when you look at when you look at books and you look at TV and all this other stuff, you should be asking, "What is? What are they trying to sell me? What are they trying to? What are they trying to uh, convey?" Like literally, that movie is uh, is a look at what what America looks like or the world really. If you if you just take the blinders off. So in other words, so so you trying to tell me. Out of all, that's what you got out of it. Not the, not the one of the most iconic lines in movie history. No. I came here to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out no. of bubble gum. No, I, I, I stuck to the more serious stuff they were talking about. Uh, but continue. Yeah. So, <clears throat> with the technocracy, you know, we wouldn't say, okay, well, you know. Big makes X amount of dollars. Psyop makes X amount or it, Y amount of dollars. Big can do this and Psyop can't do that. Like literally, you, you. It, it's all about it's all about the value you provide. Say, engineers will be worth more than basketball players in this society. The worst the worst carpenter would be worth more than the best marketing manager. You know, you gotta, you gotta add, you gotta ask, what are the constructive outcomes, and what can these people really do? Like uh, a lot of, a lot of your executives and higher ups, they're born into, they're born into money. Like literally, um, even my neighborhood, you can just look around, see the kids, see the families they come from, you know what they're going to do in the future. If your family owns a owns a a lot of company that's making decent money, that's probably what the kids going to do. Uh, if you, if your dad's a programmer, that's probably what you're going to do. You know, it's, I mean, it's in other words, it sounds like what you're, what you're saying is, uh, it's kind of like, you know, it's a meritocracy for real. I want to, I want to say more of a, you know, in other words, if your family is doing this, you, you're saying that that person or any offspring of that family 
is going to be burdened. I'm, oh, I'm only use the word burdened. They're going to be, they're going into that field. They they don't have the the right to choose to do anything. No, 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 no. I, what I'm saying is, in today's society, where you're born, where you're or who you where you're born and who you're born to, has more to do with uh, your advancement on this planet than what you know. Because the, the, the more, the better you're born in terms of family, the more opportunities are going to be open to you. I mean, I can, I can get behind that. That, that is very true. I mean, hell, you can even just break that down to uh, being in a, a household with a mother and a father. I mean, you can, right. you can go, even go that, that basic with it, you know? Right. But, but at the end of the day, you know, we should have a society that, you know, will will help a kid, you know, have a stable life, regardless of regardless of parent. So what because the ability, because you can't think about it, you can't think and study and everything else if you can't if you don't have stability. Like I was thinking, I was thinking about okay, uh, you know, one of my my pet projects is I want I want to, I want my own school. I think I think I can I can I can do it better. Oh no, no 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 no. This is like literally, like literally. I would I would get a school and I would I would um in in like K through twelve. I would base it based on Kumai. You ever heard of that? Um, I've seen it like while driving around, but I cannot. Yeah, you live you live in a pretty affluent you live in a pretty affluent place. Hey, whoa, so. whoa 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 whoa! I do not live. I work to get here, I, you know, but hell, you can. I'm talking about big. I, 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 I live in a pretty affluent place too, and I got Kumon up the street in both directions. Well, I don't, I don't have one. I got to go look for, it, but I don't have kids, so I've, it's not something that I've actually taken and taken an active, um, you know, look into. Yeah, well, you can actually build super kids if you give them the right education. That's. Literally, literally, the right education is what separate the rich from the poor. Dude, they have whole show. They built a Superman. They called him the Million Dollar Man. You know, now with inflation, he might be you know six and a half to seven. You know, hopefully he didn't run on coal. But yes, you can build. Okay, I have a question for you. When you so uh, we we when we went to college, it was kind of different. You went to a state school. I went to a private school. When you went from uh, when you went from DPS to BG, did you notice that? Did you notice the how bad the quality of education you got was in high school? Oh my freaking lord! You're talking to this guy, this guy right here. This guy failed um, college level English twice simply because he did not know how to write a paper. But uh, I could quote stupid stuff like um, "Don't quit." Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I yeah, could, I could quote I could quote the dagger speech from Macbeth, but I did not. Know. Right. And just to just to just to go deeper on that, when I asked, I actually went back and I asked my teacher, why did you not teach us how to write a paper? Long story short, she said that since the majority of the students were not going to college anyway, she didn't want to use the time. Wow. Suffice it to say that I was a little bit upset, but you know what? Um. I learned from it. I grew from it. And what I learned was, I, you know, one of the things, I think it was uh, the, the, the great Socrates. I think you, you heard that guy. I think it was Socrates that said it. I'm the wisest man in the world because I realize I know nothing. Um, I realize uh, I know nothing. Have you ever, have you ever uh, read The Republic? The, I read The Downfall of The Republic. No, play, uh, Plato's Republic. That's another. That's a classic. You got to read that. So, so that'll 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 give you democracy versus fascism. So, Psyop, So, I know you said that you wanted to start having this into a series. You know, what do you? Uh, how do you plan to lay this out over over the uh, the series of episodes? Um, I, um, I, what I what I plan to do is take each section of of um, the areas of life. Economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, war. And each section I'll, I'll talk on that subject in relation to the techno tech, uh, technocracy and what we have now. 
And actually, I'll throw in, I'll throw in socialism and pure communism and all. I like, I've, I read a lot of history and economics, so I can, I can flip between the different ones. I know where the shortfalls are. I know where, like, you know, you would think pure communism. We oh, and actually, pure communism has never been tried because in pure communism, the government owns nothing. The people own everything. All right. Well. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to transition a little bit to our uh, to our next segment, what we'd like to call we like to call it Tech Tales. Tech Tales, and what this is this is a section where Psyop and I we have worked in the technology industry for eh, 10, 15, 20 years. And throughout that time, we have a number of shows, a number of stories that we've seen and we've witnessed in a lot of WTF moments that we figured that we would like to share with you. So with this being the first show and B comes before C, I'm going to go ahead and tell the first story. You all right with that, Sayop? Yeah, go ahead. All right. So way back when, way, 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 way. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Way back when at the, um, I was working at a help desk. And a help desk, you know, I don't know what it is. Like when you're first starting out in technology, you get that first help desk job. You go in there, you think, you know what? I'm going to save the world one phone call at a time. You know, you think that you're going to actually, you know, everything. And it just beats you down. It just wears on you. Because when you really and truly think about it, a help desk, these people only call because they got a problem. They don't call to say hi. They don't call to say thank you. And even if they do, they might get a survey on the back end saying, how was the service, which you never hear about. But if you do something bad, oh, it's full for sure. You're going to definitely hear about that. Then they got to have you in the meeting. Then you got to have. But anyway, so um, this has got to be one of the funniest experiences I've ever seen at a help desk, which was um, we actually had a guy. I'm, you know, I'm not naming any locations. I'm not saying no names. But we had a guy who actually had narcolepsy working at the help desk. And I know it doesn't sound right, but it, sometimes it's funny because he'll be in the middle of a call. He'll go, you know, hey, thanks for calling the help desk. Can I, may I help you? And he would go through the call. And then about three minutes later, you just start hearing him snoring in the background just... And... You know, we would kind of go, is he asleep? Is he asleep? You know, we would start looking around. And actually, what we used to do is we, you know, we don't want to see nobody get fired. You know, we all we all at the desk, you know, it was like one desk, one sound. It was like, it's kind of like a drum line, but with the desk. Because if you made one bad call, that person would probably end up calling back and cussing you out. And that's like five minutes. But anyway, so what we used to do is on the back of our cubes, we had hangers for our coats and whatnot. And we used to go around and we used to actually like, okay, this person is responsible for keeping him awake that day. And when you think about a help desk, I want you to think about this, Psyop. When you contact a help desk, um, or, or when a help desk person agent calls, you don't know what kind of calls on the other end of that phone. It could be a simple password reset, or it could be something complicated that you cannot handle. But at the same time, we're trying to make sure this guy behind us or around us doesn't get fired. So what we would do is for the people that weren't there, either they weren't working that day or they were um, on lunch or something happened. What they would, what we would actually do is we will take all the hangers and we just put them on Who's ever turn it was to watch him for that day. And when we hear him snoring, we would just kind of just go behind us and just clang, 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 clang <laughs> everything up. And what made it so funny was, and once again, I, I, I'm not knocking, um, knocking anybody who has the actual issue, but what made it so funny was because we knew that he had started the call, he had initiated the call, but somewhere he fell asleep. So guess what? He had to start all the way over like, you know, thanks for calling the help desk. And then people would start complaining about him. But we would kind of kind of sort of fudge it a little bit. 
and go and say, oh, nah, he's doing a good job. But unfortunately, we had a, a mechanism where we could actually take a look at how many calls a person has taken, what their average call time was, um, and all these different metrics because for some odd reason our team leads are kind of lazy and didn't have this installed on their machines. So on any given day, on an eight-hour shift, you would take anywhere between – seven and ten calls an hour okay so you're talking about 60 or 70 calls a day i want you to do all right all right sign up i want you to you know you're a smart guy you're a developer i want you to do some quick math okay what is the average call time if you have taken five calls in an eight hour shift you said five call an eight hour shift yes what that'd be what 40 minutes or, no, no. Five five calls. Five, <laughs> yes, five calls. Oh, that'd be like one point two hours. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, he took five calls in one shift. Oh wow! Yeah, I only think I can get to get away with that in code. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like like literally, if I got it, so oh, we think got. Think about this: you just paid somebody, you know, ten, fifteen dollars an hour, and they took five calls. Would you be upset with that? Yeah, unless they well, actually, I got to see what the calls were about. They better not be like you know, the guy had to hit press oh, power oh, or some see, stuff like that, that. See that that's the sad part. We had a quality person. Who would you know monitor like every call got recorded, but what would happen is um, like once once a month the quality person would take random calls from random people and you would get graded on those calls. Now, the team lead that was the, that guy's manager actually pulled up those calls and asked the quality person to review them for that day because I I will say that back in those days, all right, I'm going to say two words to you that. Might bring up bad memories. You ready? Mm-hmm. Thomas Kennard. <laughs> no, I'm just playing with you. Playing with you. No, but uh, no, actually, Lotus Notes. Uh, and uh, actually, Lotus Notes brings back good memories. Notes made me a lot of money. We don't want to talk about Lotus Notes. <laughs> Lotus Notes was my friend in college because that was when I first got exposed to email from Pine Mail, which was all text. But anyway, but um. We used to do Lotus Notes installs, and this was going over in the in where I used to where I used to work. They uh, the locations they had token ring networks. Right? Mm. Yeah, and you had to try to download um, the software from a, a server. I mean, this server couldn't have been much more than like like a P two maybe somewhere around there, somewhere around there. I mean, you're talking, you know, like. One step above like a 486, but below a Xeon. And you, got, like and you got contention. How many people y'all have in the office? We don't want to talk about that. Was, <laughs> we don't want to talk about that. that uh, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm going like at, a blunt. I'm, I'm going. <laughs> I, I'm going into the. I'm going. In, I'm going into the deep dark nastiness of it. <laughs> look, look, look. Most efficient network standards, but at the same time, it was terrible because you know, especially if that ring got lost. I mean, imagine if you if you uh, if you in a cipher and everybody is passing the blunt, they go around. When it's your turn, it don't show back up. You know, I gave it to you, so you gonna be like, where that? Then that person gonna go, man, I gave it to him. And th- but anyway, I digress. But anyway, um. So we used to have to do these notes installs, and these notes installs would take every bit of 45 minutes to an hour, and we was running these off of, like, 386 machines, right? <clears throat> so I remember my team lead came to me one day and said, you know, they came in and said, Big, you kind of had a, a, a slow day. What happened here? I was like, did you look at my calls for that day? And she was like, oh, you seem to have a lot of notes installs. I said, yeah, so I need you to – and once again, this is one of those bold moves that Big – would not normally do at his job, which was, I said, hey, do you want quantity or do you want quality? Because you can't get them both. 
Oh, I want quality. I want quality, but can you? Sp- no, nah, I can't speed it up. It's token ring. I can't make it go no fast. <laughs> but anyway, so they pulled the logs for this guy, and two of them were password resets. But here's the catch. There was an hour or so of dead silence. And apparently we must have been busy that day because we didn't catch the guy. We didn't actually wake him back up to be able to take the next call. So I felt bad for him, but at the same time, it was just kind of like, you know, you can only do so much. See, in a technocracy, he wouldn't have had that job. He probably didn't want the job. He better gave in a technocracy, well, then he gave him something to 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 work well, with. Well, and once again, I actually talked to him, and you know, this is near and dear to your heart. I know you will you will you will, you will sympathize with him. But basically, he said that his medication for his um, uh, I'll say necropathy that that got something to do with dead people. They ain't got to do nothing. But for his illness, was so expensive that he couldn't take it every day. So, you know, he had to, like, ration it out to where if I'm going to get a month or two weeks supply, I got to, you know, you can't take it every day. I'll take it every other day. I'll take it before work and on the weekends. But, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a sad thing. But, you know, working at, the, um, working at the help desk, I have a lot of stories that I would like to share with our audience, you know. But, um, you know, I wish him well. I hope that, you know, he got some better insurance because they um, – because he did end up leaving and getting a new job. I think I, um, no, I did not run into him. So, so anything else you want to t- you want to talk about before we uh, before we close up shop here, Psyop? Uh, no. Uh, one, uh, I think here pretty soon there's a lot of things that are going to change. See, that's type that's type of stuff that end up on the list. All righty then. So, uh, <laughs> so Sia, so do you know? Uh, so you know we so we're going to hit you up next week. This is going to be a weekly show. If you're looking for me, you can hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. Bi seven Gs. Um, Sia, anything that you want to? Uh, if you know, if uh, if they want to contact you, contact him. Don't contact me. Bit, I'm anonymous. She had to go. You know, bullets ain't got no name on them. I see how he want to be. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, like, literally, I try to keep my digital footprint as small as possible. All right. So, look. But if you want to hit up the show, you can hit us up at, up at the beta build at gmail.com. Um, you know, we don't have anything else to say. So, you know, we're going to go ahead and close it out. Say good night. I, I, actually, I actually do have some, one thing to say. The technocracy will win. That's what cryptocurrency is. The, the the people the people the people that actually know something. The people. The people that actually know something the are people. putting the women and children to bed, and we're going to get this earth together. All right, man. Look, we say that shit for another day. We out. <laughs> Peace. Peace.